This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by Promix Academy. Hey everybody, welcome to the last SMG viewers comments for 2016. Let's get right to it. Click bait it to death, get a pick of a hot babe, believe it or not, hot babes are a metal thing, and don't just taunt us, leave it up there for a good five or ten seconds so we can pause and drool for a while before we get to the video. Shit, I mean, what's the puzzle, yo? Ask and you shall receive. Check this out. Yeah, little known fact is I shot the top to photo sets for Girls of Guitar World for 2013. I'd like to ask you guys a question. I've got a lot of these uh, photos still on file. I made a calendar a few years ago, did okay. But um, I have the ability to print posters and I was wondering if any of you guys might be interested in some posters of this sort of thing. Let me know either way, yes or no. Um, if yes, I'll make them available on the SMG shop. If not, forget I mentioned it. You know, I can never tell everybody's so freaking politically correct these days. Hi Glenn, I used to work in the musical instrument retail back in the 80s. Yeah, I am that old, but never sold anything to a customer that I thought was crap gear-wise, not the customer. Unless they insisted it was what they wanted. However, I buy pretty much all my gear from Andertons and Guilford and find all their staff to be honest and forthright. Yes, you know the place, you've been there. Keep up the great videos, Glenn, and best wishes as always from England. I should backpedal a little bit there on what I said a couple episodes back about people working behind the counter at uh, guitar stores and whatnot. First and foremost, yes, I've been to Anderton's. The staff there is absolutely magnificent. Lee Anderton runs a very tight ship. Uh, you should be very proud of what he's done. I know they've had a very, very busy holiday season. So uh, kudos to everybody working there. And uh, you guys have been doing a magnificent job. And I, I gotta clarify a little bit about uh, some of my encounters, you know, Guitar store employees, there's good, there's bad. You know, there, there's extremes to both sides. And I have had a lot of good experiences over at Guitar Centers in Detroit, specifically uh, the guys at the Roseville store and the Dearborn store have been absolutely magnificent. Uh, my issue with Guitar Center was way back in 2000. Like I said, some kid giving me some attitude when I wanted to buy a Neve preamp, just basically out of jealousy more than anything, which I thought was fucking ridiculous. It's like, if I'm gonna buy something, don't give me fucking attitude for it. But for the most part, um, yeah, most guitar store employees, most music shop employees that I've dealt with um, over the last five, 10 years have been absolutely fantastic. So um, I do kind of feel bad at some of the, uh, for some of the employees at some of the bigger chains in the States because I know they're getting a raw deal from their corporate overlords. But then again, you know, there's other shops, you know, places like Sweetwater where the staff is absolutely fucking amazing. And I'm, I've got a really good relationship with a few people there and I can just email them and be like, hey, what do you guys think of this? What, you know, I'd like to get my hands on that. How soon can you get it to me? And they take care of you. So um, there's good and bad and everything. Americans are always having to plug something stupid. I was just enjoying watching you have a rant and bang in the middle of it. You plug some crappy product. Perhaps you should have just eBayed the Spider 5, dumbass. Just for the record, I am Canadian. This is Jackson Ward. He's an American. Cool guy. When he remembers how to play on time. Something like that, yeah. Fuck you. The fuck? You're advocating garbage mics now? Dude, where did your standards go since I subscribed a year and a half ago? Your channel is fucking sellout central. Yes, I took a sledgehammer to the Mark V Spider because I'm a solo. Dude, a lot of people were asking for my thoughts on the cheaper drum mic packages. You know, I thought um, the Samson was a very good bang for the buck. Sure, it's not gonna be anywhere nearly as good as a bunch of 421s and some nice expensive overheads, but for the price they're asking, yes, you can get some very usable sounds out. I'm sorry if you haven't been able to, but I know a bunch of other kids probably can, and that's why I did that video. Did you get paid for this by Samson? Okay, apparently I need to make this clear because some of you guys haven't been paying attention. If I am being sponsored, I will say so in the beginning. This is brought to you by, hence like this episode we're doing right now is brought to you by Pro Mix Academy. But the Samson demo was not paid for. They sent me a, a bunch of mics and I'm giving them away to a viewer. You know, I've got drum mics, but I thought, hey, let's check out some cheaper mics and see, you know, what the kids working out of their bedrooms and their basements can afford and see what can, we can really do Federal law requires that I disclose the video is sponsored. I will say that either in the title card or in the description as proudly sponsored by Learn How to Read, Dumbass! Why do you never mention carving gear? Because you can't find it in Canada. If I could get my hands on it, I, I would. Brandon from Oni, he's got a Kiesel, and I know Kiesel and Carvin are the same shop, are they not? Yes, they 
Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, the peanut gallery says yes. Um, so yeah, we did bring in a Kiesel and I thought it was amazing. I do want to do a full review on it, but I know Brandon's schedule is really fucking crazy right now. Uh, he's been out on the road with like children of Bodum and um, what the guy, the Cavalera brothers and all kinds of stuff. So um, as soon as we can get him in for a spare minute, we'll bring his eight string Kiesel in and do a full review on it. Cause I think they are very fucking cool guitars. Would love to see some more carving gear in here. You should definitely set up some kind of Spectre Sound Mix Academy. You sir are a genius. Thank you so much for asking. There's some stuff in the works right now. I can't quite tell you what's going on um, at this particular moment, but yes, there is some stuff coming. Meanwhile, check this out. So, hey guys, I'm very excited to bring you this week's sponsor, Pro Mix Academy. It's an online mixing school headed up by Warren Hewart, whose credits include Ace Freely and Aerosmith. There's all kinds of mixing lessons available, and this month's project is none other than the song Electricity by Motorhead. If you've ever wanted to mix this legendary band, now is your chance. Cameron Webb takes you through this mix, breaks it down instrument by instrument, and teaches you how to put it all together. Pro Mix Academy lessons are available in my SMG shop. The link is in the description below. Check it out. This is so good. I'm sitting in the Ottawa airport waiting for the plane to get to the next gig laughing out loud and people are starting to stare at me. Priceless. Thanks for making the wait go faster. Glad you enjoyed it. That's the reason we do those videos, uh, just to make people laugh and have a good time. Glad we can help you out there, man. What do you think about parallel compression on the snare? I really love that technique on the snare. I think parallel compression on the snare is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to be doing a dedicated episode to advanced drum mixing techniques. So stay tuned for that. I'll be doing that in Harrison Mix Bus, actually, which makes parallel compression on the snare very, very simple to do. And it just sounds fucking amazing. So stay tuned. On power tubes, isn't it a bad idea to replace them without getting the amp biased? Really depends on the amp. I mean, like old Marshalls, yeah, you should probably get biased. Most modern amps are run with a pretty cold bias, so you can just swap the tubes out like you would light bulbs. They're designed to be swapped like that. And even a dual rectifier, you know, it's got a switchable bias. You can go from uh, 6L6s to EL34 just by the flick of a switch, no problem. Don't worry yourself too much about it. And please, like I've said a couple of times now, I would really like to pay for decent drum metal samples approved by you, Mr. Fricker. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of you guys have mentioned that, that you'd be interested in seeing some SMG samples. And um, we've got a couple meetings at NAMM. We're going to be uh, talking to a few people. So we will let you guys know what's going on. But um, the, the beginnings are starting to happen with that. We've already got some stuff picked out. We're just going to figure out how to make it happen. As soon as we know something, you will. It's no secret that you're a nerd when it comes to comics, manga, anime, etc. But have you ever played Dungeons & Dragons? Why, yes. Yes, I have. I think I started in like 1981. 182, something like that. Seventh grade, we are actually playing um, regular Dungeons and Dragons. Then when I got into high school, we moved up to advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, with the books and all that. Yeah, back when computer graphics sucked and you had to do everything on paper and the whole deal. Yeah, it's lots of fun. I haven't played any of that shit in years, though. TJ, uh, on the other hand, still plays. Um, so he's the bigger fucking nerd than me in that case. Fuck you, Glenn. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Okay, then. <laughs> hey, Glenn, cheers from across the water in Michigan. I'm starting up my own home studio and was wondering your opinion was on letting customers use your own personal instruments. Thanks for the inspiration and all the laughs, man. Uh, I've got a pretty open policy when it comes to that in the studio. Basically, if it's up on the wall, if it's a guitar or bass or whatnot, if it's there, you, it's there to be played. The only guitar I really don't let my clients play is my, is my uh, Washburn from back in 88. It's a 29 fret. It's very special to me. Um, I barely even play it. It's kind of like a museum piece at this point. In the studio itself, all instruments in the studio are tools and meant to be used. That Guitars, drums, you freaking name it. Um, if you can put your hands on it, you can play it. That's always been my policy. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying. That is staying. <laughs> Fucking TJ. Saw Weird Al for the first time last year. Having been a fan for 10 plus years, I was not disappointed. He and the band put on one hell of a show. Glenn, have you ever had a good comedy novelty band in the studio? What were they like? Please drop names if you can, as I'm looking for recommendations to listen to. Some of the best gigs I've been to recently have been humorous. As well as Weird Al, I've recently seen Ilvana, Elvis fronted Nirvana, as ridiculous and fantastic as it sounds, and Tragedy, the all-metal tributes to Bee Gees and beyond. You've not lived until you've done YMCA in a metal crowd. Dude, that's awesome. I totally want to check that out. That's great. Um, one of the most fun times I've ever had in the studio was way back in 2003 doing a band from Detroit called Wolfbait. And uh, they had songs um, like Dawning of the Robot Age where they sang the chorus in binary. This is years before um, you know, Flight of the Concords did it, mind you. And uh, you had other songs like, you know, um, they had a song about Lord of the Rings called Broadsword. Um, other title tracks were... Um, 
dropped by the devil that was about being too evil to be on the Decker devil's record label everybody's personal favorite eat pussy till we puke so there you go yeah check them out if you can that was a lot of fun uh, if you dig dig it up yes you can hear what my production skills were like way back 13 years ago thankfully i did get better He's speaking on the wrong side of the mic. Doesn't want to upload a new video and deleting rational comments to avoid correcting his mistake. Yeah, that's why I put up a second video saying, hey, you know what? I fucked up. Dude, it takes a lot for me to delete a comment and just because I fuck up doesn't mean I'm going to delete something. You know what? It's like, I have no problem admitting my mistakes because I am far from perfect. I'm experienced, but I am nowhere near perfect. Where were you for the second video, man? Or just do facts have nothing to do with your comments? Fuck, this was my favorite mix you've ever done. You knocked it out of the park with this one, Glenn. Thanks a lot, man. I just wanted to show what you could do with some lower priced equipment. And it's definitely not the preamps that will hold you back. It really comes down to your own engineering skill. What's really cool is I'm hopefully gonna be doing some more stuff with Focusrite. I think we're gonna have lunch at NAMM and uh, hang out with those guys for a little bit. And um, maybe I can get my hands on the two channel because I know there's been a lot of interest in that. And uh, we'll see what else is in the, uh, in the cards with those guys. Anyway, that's it for this episode of SMG Viewers Comments. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget, check out Pro Mix Academy. It's your chance to mix Motorhead. It's a chance to work with legendary artists on a real song that hasn't been sanitized by a freaking computer. Um, I really dig the song. I think it's awesome, and I can't wait to do my mix. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like the content, please support the channel either at my SMG shop or through my Patreon. If you want to see more, hit one of the playlists. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Somebody might get offended. Fuck you, Glenn.